Talking over inside. Come on, break it up. Now the point we're making. You know, Counselor, there's that old saying, there are three sides to every story. Yours, his, and the truth. Well, Mr. Kiefer here said nothing but that. Truth. As he sees it. Never saw a case yet where the fault was all one side, so let's try to compromise. Your Honor, my client is convinced there's just no hope. You see, what we're dealing with here isn't a sick marriage, it's a dead one. What am I, the undertaker? Now, on page nine of the second deposition... Six o'clock. Hmm? Oh. Six o'clock, gentlemen. Awful lot to cover still. I suggest we resume 9 a.m. For me? Mrs. Kiefer, could I have a word with you? Sure. And you too, Mr. Kiefer, over here. Me? <laughs> oh, uh, you'll excuse us, please, the rest of you. <sighs> well, I don't do this very often. Once in a while. Okay to smoke in here? Well, I suppose it is now. Go ahead, Mrs. Kiefer. She doesn't smoke. I gave it up. You agree with your Mr. Jenner about this marriage is dead? I think so. What about you? I don't know what I think by now. How did you two happen to meet? What's the difference? Wasn't anything special. We just... We happened to. Just a pickup. It was not. Okay, it was not. Where? Central Park. That's right, Central Park. It was one summer, and I had this friend, George Bastian, and we had a habit of every Saturday afternoon, sometimes Sundays, to go over in the park and horse around. Finally, give him a ball, get a rowboat, pitch pennies. But this one day, we happened to be walking along, having a discussion. And we were figuring this idea back and forth about the post office, see where the both of us worked. And we were real engrossed like you get on scientific subjects. Next thing you know, these two girls come walking right through between us. So we looked them over, and George says, bet your buck they look back. So I said, bet. So sure enough, they looked back. We did not. I remember paying him the buck. So then George gets this idea to cut around this other path and run, see, very fast, up and around past them. I didn't want to do it, but he drags me practically over a hill there. I don't go in for that kind of kid stuff, but George, that's how he is. And I couldn't talk him out of it, and I couldn't hold him back. So on the other side, sure enough, there they were, giving us the eye. And we come right through between them. But we kept right on walking. We never looked back at all. It so happens I remember it different. That's how it was. Then George says to do it again. So we go racing around. And by this time, we figured they must have been going crazy. And we just sort of kidded them along as if we knew them. <laughs> as if we weren't wiser the whole gag all along. And again, we didn't look back. We neither. But by this time, I'd kind of got a good look at them, and they looked nice, you know, regular, not just a couple of ordinary girls. I don't remember exactly what happened next, but next thing you know, we're all standing around talking. Then George, right away with the address book. That's the kind of guy he was. And I said to him, put it away. But no, he keeps trying to date him up. That George, he has no resistance. So then we started going around together, the four of us, two couples. I remember one time we drove out to Long Island to this drive-in movie place. Around about now, we'd got to be pretty friendly with each other. We tried switching dates on different nights, but the way it seemed to gel was George with Marion and Florence with me. I remember I drove out, but he drove back. To tell you the truth, that was the way I had it figured. I used to enjoy telling her all my troubles at the post office. And it was right there that night in Florence's hallway the subject came up. The subject about getting married, I mean. I didn't bring it, she brought it. How? By you saying, how come a fellow like you isn't even married? What are you waiting for, the boss's daughter? I remember laughing because I thought it was pretty cute at the time. 
But anyways, we got talking about it pretty serious, and I started in explaining something about my theory I had at that time. My theory was I didn't want to get married. See, I didn't have anything against it, but it was no good for me at that time, see? i just gotten into the civil service then, making 2300 So how could I get married? Next thing I know, I'm in Atlantic City on a honeymoon. Mine. I kept thinking down there all the time to myself. What are you doing down there? You can't afford it. It so happens the whole honeymoon was a wedding gift to my sister Joan and her husband, Howard L. Shipley. That's what I'm saying. I couldn't afford it. He could afford to give it, but I couldn't afford to take it. So then, by luck, we get this apartment in Peter Cooper Village, and we started up in housekeeping. Wasn't much keeping to do. One table and one chair. There were three chairs and quite a lot of furniture. In fact, the bedroom was nearly completely. Not that we ever used it much with his crazy job and the crazy hours. Wouldn't exactly call the post office department crazy. I remember the first morning, a quarter to six, re Shut it off. I hear it. I just shut it off. What time is it? What time is it? Go sleep, honey. Uh. I gotta get up. No, you don't. Uh. Why? I wouldn't be a good wife. You can be a good wife later when I come home. Breakfast. I'll grab something on a mat. You think so? Look, you don't want to sleep too late, because isn't this the day they're coming over? Oh. The luncheon. Joan and your mother and my sister. Holy smoke, I think so. So get up sometime, my baby. That's right. Get up sometime around 6 o'clock. Cooking, didn't I? <laughs> so disgusting is good, plain home cooking. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, wish I wish I was single again. I, I wish, wish I was single again. For when I was single, my pockets would jingle. I wish I was single again. I married me a wife, oh, then. Guy gets I married. married, all his friends turn comedians. What is that? Hey, touchy, too. Well, naturally, from all that love and honor and obeying. We heard that old thing about two can live as cheap as one, providing one don't eat. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Come on, fellas. Oh, yeah, yeah Bernie. Come on. Chad, all kidding aside, we got a little thing here for you. It's not much, but. Oh, listen, you didn't have to. Something you be able to use every night when you go home. Here you are, Chet. From everybody here. Thanks, fellas, very much. What are these? Ear stoppers. <laughs> <laughs> you never use them? Well, you're gonna need them now, boy. <laughs> Look, you just stick them in just like that, see, and you got peace. <laughs> it's the only way you'll ever get it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, go on, Benny. Come yeah. on. Just a gag, Chad. Here's the present. You don't have to open it. It's a wallet. Genuine alligator. And it costs plenty, too. Yes, right, he is. Mama! Well, here I am. 
You're the first company in this whole apartment. Isn't it beautiful? Well, and I get two married daughters with two homes. Oh, well, Jones is gorgeous. But isn't this something? Of course, you realize it isn't finished yet. Oh, uh, the bedroom, you want to look in? Well, what's this? Modern? Oh, <laughs> beds to live in next week. Oh. Can't hurt yourself falling out of bed or anything. Yeah, you could trip it over. Well, it's uh, kind of trancy looking, but lovely. We're going to have two bureaus. Unpainted, just very handy with a paintbrush. Artistic. He's going to paint his a light green and mine a light pink. Why light, pray? Oh, wait a minute. I have to look at something on the stove. Oh. Mama? Mm -hmm. It's the kitchen. Oh. Huh. Give him his pork chops for lunch. Joan likes them. You like them too, don't you? If they're reliable. And Emily likes any old thing. She looks it. Hey, listen, Mama, none of that. None of what? I made up my mind this is going to be one family without all the in-laws always biting on each other. Huh. Emily's chick sister, and I love her. And so do you. I am not going to love anybody who's married to a butcher. Pat is a very fine person. And you love him, too, the same as her. Oh, I do, do Yes, I? you do. Well, that's very nice of me. <laughs> oh, what's that? Present, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't think we bought anything that shape. Well, you never know. They wrap things up so crazy. Hey. Can you afford a radio expensive as this one looks like to me? No, but Mr. Clarence F. Dow can. Oh? You know, my old boss. Oh, I didn't remember he had an F in him. The least he could do is a generous gift after all I took from him. Took uh, what? Ooh, isn't this gorgeous? A cigarette box. Is real leather? From the girls at the office. When you light up, at the end of the day, think of Edie and Marion and Gloria and Min and Charlotte and May. Yeah, you know, if that's real leather, it costs something. Smell it. Ooh, it's real leather. How are things going, Ed? No strain. City. How are you, George? Fine. And you? No change. How's Florence? Fine, fine. How come you don't look no different? Why should I? Or maybe you ain't adjusted yet. I'm adjusted. In fact, I never had it so good. I got something to go for now, after all. Yeah? Like what? Like getting someplace. Like a family man should. Yeah, I can see you're adjusted, all right. I got figuring something the other day. To make good, you don't have to be smart all your life. You only have to be smart for about 10 seconds, that's all. What do you mean, 10 seconds? See this guy who thought up the idea of the windshield wiper? Yeah? All right. How long did it take him to think it up? 10 seconds, maybe less. From then on, everything rolls, or anything. Telephone, or the subway. Cellophane. Or even take the wheel. Whoever thought up the wheel, I bet you that didn't take more than 10 seconds. Boy, married life sure has made you deep, man. Well, anyway, that's the sort of lines I'm thinking along. Three, four years, you'll be bald-headed or gray-haired. Or both. See you, George. Don't take any wooden 10 seconds. Sorry. What were you saying, Emily? No. Nothing. Just if you hadn't given up your job working all day, the house would be a mess. Now, this chop is tender. Good, Mama. So speak to your butcher. Or don't speak to him how you feel. Joan don't have to be late all the time, does she? Mine were both good. Was it grand at Atlantic City? <laughs> it was. It? How is it I never been? Because everybody gets in a rut. Take me. A rut? But down there in Atlantic City, I got into quite a lot of thinking. You know what I mean? 
I don't mean just stewing around. I mean thinking. And to tell you the truth, I was surprised how enjoyable it was. But you take most people, including me. They hardly ever get to do any thinking. When do they get the time? Or if you do get the time, there's the movies or the radio or you play a game of cards, but no thinking. Down there was my first chance and I don't know how long. And I made up a rule. I'm going to do at least a half hour of thinking every day, all by myself, just quietly. What are you going to think about? I don't know, everything. Let me know how you make out. I may try it myself. Here, take my knife, Mama. It's sharper. Mm. I could go the world over. Atlantic City be my greatest place. That saltwater taffy was nice. But there was no salt water in it. Mrs. Finney said she thought so either. It's great, though. To pose your feelings. Say, what's Joan have to be so late about? Don't you like a piano in a room? How about some curtains? Where was I reading the paper somewhere? About curtains made out of comic paper stuck on unbleached muslin with borders made of scotch tape. Say, give me back my own knife, will you, Florence? I kind of got used to it. That's her. Joey! Oh, I got caught in all the traffic. Hello, Mama. Oh, you remember Emily, don't you? Chet's sister? Oh, sure, from the wedding. Hiya, Joan. How's your cute husband? Cute. We started. <sighs> what a darling room. We're keeping your car out here. Oh, I just adore that kind of a couch. What kind is it? Sit down, Joan. We're using your silver. Beautiful? Well, the knives could be sharper. How's Howard? I guess he got our postcards OK. Why, Jello fries? It's great for you. Jack and I, we were studying this food book they gave away at Atlantic City. It turns out Jello's the healthiest thing you can eat. You can't beat fruit. Chet says you never have to be sick at all if you watch it. He says we are what you put in you. You know what I mean? Like, if you stick to only healthy food, you'll turn out healthy yourself. Chet's terribly smart about stuff. I mean, he really thinks. Like last night, he says, why do we have to blow our noses? A dog never does. And what time last night? If they keep her, trouble is just out enough promotions to go around. Have a sour ball? Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Newhouse. Just had lunch. Lots of energy in these things. Here, Joe, take this. What was I saying? But there aren't enough. <laughs> Not by a long shot. The only thing, Mr. Newhouse, see, when I file for equipment inspector, well, I wasn't married then. And do I have to make out another one now? Oh, no, no, that's all right. Thought maybe there was some uh, difference. Here, Jack, the 3 o'clock. The only difference is you may have a tougher time getting set for the exam. Why? Well, with your wife and all. Oh, uh, she's even going to help me. Lots of night work. You know what I mean. It's a kind of night work a man's wife isn't likely to appreciate. Yeah? Well, thanks, Mr. Newhouse. So I said to him it'll be easier, not harder, because my wife's going to help me, in fact. I will, too. I know it, honey. Gee, that's some beautiful wallet, all right. Not even going to use it. That's how much I like it. Well, for a special occasion, you could. That's what I said. People are certainly very nice. Hey, honey, which of these are mine? You got any idea? Well, the ones with the little ribbons tied on the end. They're oh, yours. Oh, yeah, I see. It wouldn't have been better to put the ribbons on yours, more appropriate. Why? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, I never thought. Well, maybe someday we'll be so rich we can afford two glasses, huh? It wouldn't surprise me. You know, Joan reminded me of something, my mother, too, that if not for the mumps, we never even would have got together, you and me. What's mumps got to do? The ones I had that time. What time? Bermuda. What's all this Bermuda mumps? <laughs> well, we were lying in bed and looking at the Sunday papers, and I happened to be looking for the radio podcast. Who'd you say was in bed? Both of us. Yeah, that's right. You and who else? Joan. I said that, didn't I? No, you didn't. Oh, well, that's who. Well, thanks. So I was looking to see what was on the radio. <sighs> <laughs> 
Hey, we're having some pretty natural noises tonight, aren't we? <laughs> so I was reading the Sunday papers, so I come across the travel part. So I showed it to Joan. We got going to get a can of beer. You want to go on this Bermuda cruise? No. Oh well, maybe a glass of milk, if any. First you brush your teeth, then drink beer. Ain't either one. Ew. Keep talking. I can hear you. Well, so then it got to be a whole thing. We went down. We found out it wasn't so much, so we decided. And we bought the clothes and this new luggage, all white. And when Mr. Dow heard about it, he gave me a bonus. Fifty dollars. Who? Fifty. What? Clarence F. Dow, my old boss. What's he, one of these big brother types? Or Thanks. just a big humanitarian, a good-looking blonde? Oh, never mind. I like to know these things. Why? You know how it is with some bosses and some secretaries. Oh, some, but not me. You sure? <laughs> what, are you jealous or what? Who? Well, anyway, it's ancient history, so save yourself. So don't be telling me about these happy jack old bosses throwing presents at you. Well, anyway, about four days before the boat went, poof, I'm all blown up like this. Honey, don't do that. I'm only showing you. I know. You know, if you're a child or an infant, mumps are nothing. But if you're not, oh, then something. And if you're a male, worse than if you're a female, much. Anyway, Joan says she's not going. So I said she should, whether I or not. So finally, Gloria from the office took over my ticket. I don't think you ever met her, Gloria. Her name used to be Stella, and she changed it to Gloria. Can you imagine that? Anyway, I was pretty miserable. And I remember at the last minute, I gave Joan this present, and it was perfume. I mean, real perfume. Are you looking for something? Yeah, it was a little box. Some of the fellas gave me. The wallet? It's right there. No, not the wallet. It was a little box. I'll find it. Go ahead. And I remember there was this card I wrote in it. <laughs> Here's some expensive bait to help you catch a rich one. And I just naturally meant it for a joke. Well, 12 days later, when she came back and she told me how she was engaged to this Howard and how he was this manufacturer from Newark, well, honestly, I don't know. It was like supernatural. I don't know it's so supernatural. The guy manufactures non inflammable cleaning fluids, so why is he supernatural? I didn't say him. I said the way I predicted it. Oh, sure. You missed your notch, all right. You should have been a tea leaf reader. Yeah? Well, who knows where I'd been now if not for the mumps and not going? You know where? Right here. Right here. Right here, sitting right here, pulling out your chin whiskers. <laughs> what makes you think? Because fate. That's all, just plain fate. Huh. I never realized before you were a fatalist. That's me, fatalist, private, first class. You ready? I certainly am. This day's been about three days long. Sleep some extra tomorrow. See that man about the beds? Oh, yeah, well, don't miss him. No. Or anything, would it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. So you wouldn't mind asking him, would you? Why should I? Embarrassed or anything? Why should I? I don't know. I guess I was thinking I'd be. Say, honey. Nobody could say there was anything wrong the way it all started. I mean, little things, but nothing. What was the first trouble? Remember, I don't. <laughs> of course. What was it about? 
Money, family. Oh, everything. Mixed up into one. Well, go ahead. It was just consideration, a question of consideration. I didn't ever expect him to be interested in only me and nothing else. And maybe it was selfish, but I always thought I ought to come first. And at first I did. But then it got to be ambitions and making good and then even other people. And another thing, it wasn't my fault my sister happened to be married to this well-to-do fellow. It just happened that way. But it always made him sore, Chet. And he never wanted to see them. Like once it was about after we were married about three years and we had Joey came our big blow-up. We told you about Joey, didn't we, our boy? Anyway, the blow-up started on account of Joan and Howard going to Europe for a month. They had a big farewell party and they invited us and I wanted to go. But he didn't check. So we just talked the whole thing over and I said to him, very calm, very quiet. Nobody's forcing you to go if you don't want it, but after all, she's my sister, so I'll go myself. But he was mad he had to wear his tuxedo. It was a dress-up affair. No, but on account of I was on late shift that week, I knew I wouldn't have time to go home and change. And I knew what I'd have to take. And boy, I took it. And I don't like to mix into high society, but you always did, Florence. Like, though, you gotta admit. I admit, I stood and I waited and I just knew we were gonna be late. I just knew it. Told you 5,000 times there was a breakdown and Newhouse gets in a whole lather, excited, and everybody had to give a hand. And just my luck, he picks me to clean up the floor. Better get those up off the floor before somebody comes in here and breaks their neck. There must have been hundreds of ball bearings all over the place, and it took a few minutes. The guys, they're still giving me the business. And I know she's waiting on the corner. I knew what time it was, but what could I do? Everything was piling up. I wanted to go. I had to stick around. I didn't want to get the tux dirty. After I cleaned them up pretty good, I start to take a powder. So what happens? There's another batch of bearings. By rights, I should have picked them up, but I kicked them under a hand trunk. Anything, just to get out of there, because I knew. 25 minutes I stood. That hour, I couldn't get a cab. I practically ran all the way up. So then to try to make up for it, he starts insisting to take a cab. It was as if we had that kind of money to throw around. <laughs> all day, I'm thinking how to cut corners, and all of a sudden, we're riding around in cabs. So then all the way up Fifth Avenue, she just climbs up, and I can't get a word out of her. So then with all the excitement and all the hollering, it turned out we were only about five minutes late. And at that, we were the first ones there. And of course, I get the usual frosty hello from that Howard. And right away, I started in feeling like a fish out of water. They look us over like if we had a sign on it said, poor relations. Oh, why do you make up? However they acted would have been wrong as far as you're concerned. It made me nervous. I suppose that's why you had to start drinking all those cocktails like you thought they were celery tonic. One drink, that's all I had, one drink. I didn't even finish that. I didn't even like it. Like I said to Howard, what's in here? Some of your non-inflammable cleaning fluid? But of course, he can't take a joke. Couldn't get him to crack a smile if you're Olson and Johnson and Martin and Lewis put together. Fish out of water, that's all I was. You got into the water after a while, though, didn't you? I don't even know what you're talking about. The way you were dancing with that blockbuster. What was I supposed to? I was just trying to be sociable. Joan told me to dance, so I was dancing. I was just following orders. I just grabbed the first partner I happened to see and started in dancing. I didn't know who she was. I think she was Howard's mother. Howard's mother? If you just try to stick to the truth for one minute. The way I remember it, that's the truth. No, the way it was. So how was it? It was like you thought you just invented the whole idea of dancing for the first time. I didn't want to go in the first place. I was just miserable. And that rumba exhibition, I never saw anything so repulsive. Where do you get rumba? I never danced rumba in my whole life. I don't even know how to. You sure learned how to that night. Well, I certainly don't remember no rumba. You don't seem to remember anything. When you do, you remember it all wrong. I don't see what's the whole point telling everything if you tell it all mixed up like it wasn't instead of like it was. What's the whole point? I'll tell you. You weren't even interested in what happened to me. You just wanted to be the life of the party. And me just wanting to leave. 
Yeah, and then after, when we went out to the airport to see him off. I wanted to go home. All of a sudden, I became a threesome? Not how I remember it. Because you were so high by that time. I was low, not high. You couldn't tell the difference between me and her by then. Who? You know who, that big slinky one. If that's your idea of taste, I don't know how it is you ever got together with me. What I remember is how you got stubborn and wouldn't come home. Because I wanted to have a little talk. A fine place for a talk with all those planes going... What's the matter? <laughs> nothing. Nothing's the matter. You sore about something? Just like to get on that airplane and just keep on going and never stop, that's all. What did I do? Something wrong? It all depends on what you call wrong. If you think it's all right to behave like that, I didn't even know you knew words like that. Well, the lots you don't know. Listen, what do you think you're accusing me of anyway? You don't actually think I was trying to... You don't actually think I was trying to... Do you? Yes, in Macy's window. Pardon me. Don't see what's so wrong with we can't talk it over. Well, you're in a better condition to, that's when. I'm in a perfectly condition to discuss and don't break the furniture, discuss anything at all. You wanna wake up, Joey? You ever have one of those days when you couldn't seem to do that one thing right? Well, that's me today. The first mistake I made was getting up in the morning. From then on, that one thing right. You ever have it? You didn't even kiss me goodbye this morning. Kiss who goodbye? Too busy having a big fit over wearing your tux. What tux? And leave them laying there like that all night? I tell you what I'm going to do, Florence. I'm going to leave them laying there like that all night. Yes. <laughs> Perfectly all right with me. <laughs> so I didn't kiss you goodbye this morning. So shoot me at sunrise. I'll make it up to you. I'll kiss you goodbye tomorrow twice. Keeping you waiting 25 minutes. I thought you'd do that tomorrow twice, too. And what about the ball bearings I didn't pick up I was supposed to? <laughs> frankly, I don't even know what you're talking about, frankly. What if somebody trips and breaks their necks? Shoot me at sunrise. You better have a glass of milk if you know what's good for you. Two glasses, in fact. If I knew it was good for me, I wouldn't be me.
duck keeper? Yes, sir! Good, because the Postmaster General of the United States, Clarence F. Dow, your wife's old boss, is paying us a little visit today. Three cheers for the red, white, and blue, sir! Right this way, sir. A little surprise for you, Mr. Newhouse. We have a distinguished visitor coming here to look over your post office. You don't say so. Just the President of the United States, that's all. Right in here, sir. Gentlemen, this is a peachy post office. Congratulations. Watch your step, Mr. President! and the ball bearings. What ball bearings? I was supposed to clean up, but I didn't. Everybody was sliding around, just sliding and sliding. Oh. And everybody was sliding around. Now, wait a minute. Wait a second. Chad, don't look funny. Flory, listen, Flory. What? You know how I'm always saying you don't have to be smart all your life, only 10 seconds? Yeah. Flory, I don't know. But I think so. What? I think I just had my 10 seconds. I think I thought of something great. I may be wrong, but I don't think so. But if I'm right, we're a millionaire. Flory, don't talk to me a few minutes. Give me some pencil and paper. What's the difference? I may never sleep again! And that's why we could hardly wait for till you get back. And nobody's even so much as laid eyes on it till today, except Florence and George and me. Three eyes, that's all. Three pair. Well, this sort of thing's way out of my line. You've got to get a patent lawyer. They figure out just how you can protect yourself. Oh, but that's why we decided to ask you. See, we frankly need some financing. What with a new kid coming and all, we're a little strapped. And that's why. Well, just what sort of a market would there be for a thing like this? The best market there is. It's a kid thing, see? The surest way to get anything over is to make it a kid thing. Look at the hopalongs. It's one of the biggest industries in the country today. Why? Because it's a kid thing. A man will spend, look, who knows anything if it's for his kid? Maybe he won't even buy himself a new shirt. Well, you give him a chance to buy his kid something that blows up to be bigger than anything. But it ain't only a kid got. thing. It's a sports 
thing, too. And it's healthful. But what if a few kids fall, break a few legs? Then you've got nothing but a mess of lawsuits on your hands. All kinds of skis, skates. They're not full of lawsuits. But that's something tried and true. Well, this is tried and true. We tried it ourselves. If you'd ever do it once yourself. I didn't think much of it myself till I tried it myself. No, I'm too old for this sort of thing. Why do you always keep saying you're too old? Look, kitten, don't get mad. Florence herself's been saying it's a kid thing. Not only a kid thing. Oh, come on, I would try it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> now listen, Joan, remember not to mention about this to anybody. All right, don't get so wrapped up. I'm not wrapped. Okay, okay. Yeah, good, Howard. Let's yeah. go. Well, wait a minute now. Be careful, be careful. Right. Let's go out here, Howard. You can get oh, okay, the general right. idea. Grab both my hands. That's it. That's it. This is the way. That's it. That's it. Hey, this is great, kitten. See? Some sensation, huh? Not a stop, just bend the ankle inward. See? Yeah. They might have quite a thing here, kitten. But let go. Let me do it myself. Let's go. Kitten. So it's nobody's fault you could put your finger in it. Just one of those breaks. You get enough of those breaks, next thing you'll be on repair. That's us. That doggone invention hadn't conked on us, everything would have turned out different. We'd have been right on our feet instead of on our... Excuse me. Are you saying that what broke things up was just not getting rich all of a sudden? No, but... Uh... You'd be surprised the number of people with money come through here. <laughs> Bless you. It wasn't only that. It was more like we were sort of hard luck for each other. Did you love Florence? Yes. Sure? Sure. How'd you know? Because she told me I did. And she was right. Let me ask you, Florence, just what did you want out of marriage? What I didn't get. Such as? Well, I always thought if I ever got married, the one thing I'd never be anymore was lonesome. The funny thing, you can be it even in the same bedroom with a husband. 
But he seems to be worrying and thinking about different things except you. But the different things are always for you. The kind of love they got in books and movies, that's not for people. You gotta be more realistic. Why? Well, the one thing, Judge Carroll, nobody can say I didn't try. Well, what I'm trying to locate here, and I wish you'd help me, is, is what makes you sure there's no hope? We already told. That you were in love and married and worked at it. Had a few spats and some bad luck, but, but what is it makes you incompatible? Being married to each other. That's all in the point of view. But you choose to remember how. I remember a time one summer, my husband and I went on a holiday. For some reason, I remembered the full moon and the quiet nights. He only remembers the mosquitoes. Yeah, but we went on a vacation once, too. I don't know if I remember mosquitoes exactly, but I remember the whole two weeks, Chet talking about how we couldn't afford it. We couldn't. OK. With two kids, all of a sudden, there was enough to worry. The kids were the two of us, remember? Not just me. Somebody had to worry. It was the whole thing getting harder and harder to handle. Stuck to the house all the time, practically. It started to look like we were working for the benefit of nothing but the obstetrician and the pediatrician. Had a lot of fun, though. I just know I was worrying all the time. All. Well, Ma, I'm Fanny, too. Look, honey. <laughs> Put it in give the playpen. Give me the brush. Oh, Ma, oh, Dad, I want to help you huh? pay. I know you do, Joey, but you're going to help us oh, better by playing Dad. with Alan, huh? You play with your little sister, but like a nice little boy. You know the first time I knew it could paint me good? Got to work it into the corners more. When I started painting my nails red. Ma, could I step less and hurt tonight? Ma, why can't I? Because you... Got to fix that. Two books. And send the bill to your great Mr. Dow. That set was a lemon to start with. OK, folks. Now, the next big chance to name the lucky tune goes to Mrs. Chester Kiefer of number nine, Peter Cooper Road, Gramercy 25,000. Oh, boy, lucky Mrs. Kiefer. Uh, operator, are you putting that call through right away? Uh, thank you. Thank Ma, you, operator. Ma, stop to you. Oh, I do hope Mrs. Keeper is home. You know, we're just itching to give away $2,600 in behalf of our sponsors, the makers of amazing cream for your skin. It's ringing. There. Yes? That old one, but we have the keeper on the red old keeper. This will be a big night for the keepers. Pick it up! Pick it up! Ah, oh, hello there. Anybody on the other end? Say hello, can't you? Hello. <clears throat> well, well, a good evening to you. Is this Mrs. Chester Keeper of number nine, Peter Cooper Road, Gramercy 2, 5,000? What? What do you mean, what? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah I am. Well, Mrs. Sing Cooper, that. this may be your lucky night to win $2,600, and I certainly do hope so. Are you listening to your lucky night, Mrs. Keeper? Mrs. Yes, I am, I did. Uh, yeah. I, oh, I am. Well, well, that is fine, Mrs. Keeper. Now, for $2,600, we're going to play the lucky tune for you to guess. We'll give you 15 seconds to tell us the title. OK, ready, go. <laughs> Washington Post March. No, I'm telling you, no, no, no. What then? It's, I'm almost sure it's, uh, they used to play it. It's, uh, I'm sure it's, uh, Semper Fidelis. Uh, I'm practically positive. Semper Fidelis. Time's up. Semper Fidelis, Semper Fidelis. Oh, I am sorry, Mrs. Kiefer. Better luck next time. It was the Washington Post March. But for your efforts, the makers of amazing cream for your face and skin, rub it on when your wrinkles begin, will send you the large deluxe size as a gift from the manufacturers. Thank you, and good night. Thank you. <laughs> rub it in when the wrinkles begin. Don't be surprised I never talk again. Yeah, money you get that way never does you any good. Holy jumpin', 2,600. 
Oh, listen, I bet by the time they got through with that, it wouldn't be over half of that. And what's wrong with half of that? And another thing, it could have been Semper Fidelis. Look, none of that gaggle does me any good. Me neither. You gonna take a bath? Why, you want to? Go on, you catch a cold. No, I won't. What time do you tell Emily and Pat? Sure you will. Huh? Seven o'clock. We don't want a cold for our anniversary. Okay. How'd I ever know when to take a bath before we got married? Did you? <laughs> Maybe we should have splurged on a regular babysitter. That sister of mine can be awful late sometimes. You know what I hear they have greater top and that is their baked potato. Hey, how about wearing a pair of stockings not got a mend in them for our anniversary? Like you were my girl, not wife. If I was your girl, how would you know if I had a mend in my stockings, Mr. Fresh? I didn't think I should shave. I did this morning. Yeah, our anniversary, wearing your tux and all. And shave fast. I don't want to rush through a top and any dinner the one time I get to go. Do it, sweet. Hey, I'd have thought Mr. Dow would have taken you to Toffinetti's a couple of times. What? Clarence F. Dow, your old boyfriend. I mean, boss. Honestly. And truly. If you're so anxious to get jealous, I'll give you a list. I'd give you a list, too, only there's so many, I forgot most of them. Okay, Don Juan, shave your face. <laughs> that old black magic has me in its spell. That old black magic that I love so well. Those icy fingers, da-da-da, da-da. Time, da, is da, it? Da, da. Oh, you think maybe we ought to take a cab? It's almost seven. I mean, it's no economy to eat a swell dinner fast and ruin the effect of our stomach. What do you say? I'm treating us to a cab. Since when do you get so manly? But what can I do? I'm just a slave. Uh-huh. What time did you get the table at the Latin Quarter for? 11.30. Show starts around midnight or so. That's them. Uh, next time, regular babysitters. Wait a minute, I'm getting in my dress. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. <laughs> That's your service. Mr. and Mrs. Pat Bundy Babysitters, Inc. Glad to sit on any baby in town. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding, are you? Hey, come on, straighten out. Never been more straightened in my life, Buster. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to, to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Florence and Chad! Happy birthday to you! Four years ago this minute, at 14 minutes past 11, the two of us became one of us. Oh, honey. Oh. What's the matter? Are you sorry, oh, honey? I was thinking, suppose I never met you. You couldn't have avoided me. I'd have kept on meeting till I met you. <laughs> Judge Carroll, for the next few years, the everything went along pretty all right, didn't it? How should I know? Between a job and home and raising the kids up, the best I was was punchy. I didn't know if things were going good or going bad. They were just going, that's all. Then the next thing came, that decoration day. Yeah, last year. Decoration day. Mom, can I wear my bathing suit? Can I? Then I'll be all ready, could I? You want to ride? 
ride home in a wet bathing suit will do you. Could I, Ma? I want to be cool. I don't care if I freeze to death, can I? What happened to pickles, Chet? Overalls. Wear your overalls. In with the salt and pepper where I'm putting the eggs, okay? I never get to do one thing I ever want to do. Not one thing, not one. All right, Miss Misery, get going or we'll drive away without you. You would not. And your red sneakers, remember? My red sneakers? Hey, come on, fellas. You can have that. Aren't you brush them off, Joey? I wish I could live in the woods, Pa. Why couldn't we? I know how to light a fire with no matches. Rub two pieces together. Want to see me? Why does that make a fire? In a minute, it'll start. Watch for smoke, Ma. Just Come watch. Come on, Joey. Let's go swimming. Come on, Joey. Yeah, hey, yeah. I'm coming too, okay? Only to the edge, Joey. You just stay. Okay, okay. Can you make fire, Pa? Yeah. It's too hot for fire. Take a cupcake. You know what? I bet it'd be a great idea. What? Flavored postage stamps. No. What do you mean, no? Just because you didn't think of it. Or that other great mind, George Bastion. No, because where's the return? Who likes to lick stamps? Nobody. But if it's clover, mint, or spearmint, why not? Can you charge more for it if it's flavored? Would you? I would. Pay four for a three cent if it was. Gladly. All right, so even if you did, which I doubt, who'd get the money? The government. So? I'd like to figure something how I can get some. Uh, all right, even if not money, an idea like that could get you someplace in the post office to find. Get me canned for being a nut problem. Now, don't be surprised if I work on this. You do that, honey. I love the kisses of Dolores. I, 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 Dolores. Not Marie or Emily or Doris. Only my Dolores. From a balcony above me, she whispers, Love me, and throws a rose. Ah, but she is twice as lovely. Die to be with my Dolores. Where's the mother? I, 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 Dolores. I was made to serenade Dolores. Joy, she's the water. 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 Joy, Joy. Joy. After all, this is the thing we... <laughs> oh, a year ago that was, and I still can't believe it. I don't know how we lived through it. <laughs> Maybe we didn't. 
A thousand times we think we can't live through a thing, and somehow we do. One thing I know is I can't much more. Me neither. Of course, that's the easiest thing to do, give up. We tried, Judge Carroll, like we told you. I'm sure you did. It wouldn't work. Why not? Well, it's a thing you got to believe in. And I guess Florence just stopped believing in it. Is that true, Florence? I don't know. I know I got all tired out. Well, that's not a permanent condition, is it? He's tired out too, Judge Carroll. And he's right what he said. So okay if we go now. So it was last summer you lost the boy. What about since then? You want to go ahead? I don't know what. Well, the thing with Joey, I don't think we ever really got over that. For a while there, near the beginning, I just couldn't get it through my head. Like one day, it must have been about a month after, I was just starting home from work, and on the street there, a guy was selling these toys. And I thought to myself, I bet Joey liked that. They're only 65 cents, so I took a flyer. I just couldn't get it through my head, see? So I bought this thing, and I started to walk away. And all of a sudden, I stopped. And I remembered what I was going home to, and who was there and who wasn't. So I started back to the guy to give it back, the thing. I didn't care about the money, but I just didn't want to have that thing. But then, all of a sudden, it seemed wrong to give it back, so I went again. And I was thinking all kinds of crazy things, like maybe it was a mistake, and maybe the kid that got drowned was enjoyed by the lake. Maybe he was just lost or something, and I thought of getting right on the train and going up there to look for him. I don't know. I admit it wasn't sensible, but nothing I was doing around that time was sensible. <laughs> Boy, I thought I'd never get out of that hospital. And it was sure great for Florence, too. Every day, two, three times. You ever hear me complain? I didn't say that. I said I appreciated it. I know you appreciated it. So, all right. Now, like, that wasn't tough enough. The doctor makes me go up to this Hudson convalescent home up there near Brewster. And he says I gotta stay there a month. So, naturally, we can't get together only except on Sundays, like. So then one time, the big subject came up about her going back to work. It was funny. I was expecting it all that time, and still in all, I was surprised when it came up. So I said to her, maybe I don't remember so good now this concussion's knocked my buttons loose, but don't you remember me telling you I didn't want you to go back to work? Well, what's the harm finding out what's the situation in case I have to? I don't want you to have to. Well, don't make a tragedy. I don't want my wife supporting herself. What am I, some peculiar? No, just impractical. Why impractical? Because you don't want to. Lunch, the soda fountain, and everything. Can I get a black and white? I don't want you to do it, that's all. Okay, Chef. Do what, Ma? I don't want you to do what? Just gonna tell him I gotta get out sooner, that's all. You only make it worse if you go back ahead of when you should. How about just a plain cone, Ma? Only ten cents. Yeah, here's a quarter. Get yourself a black and white. Hot dog. Look, Florrie, I know I'm pretty tough to get along with. But if you have to take a job, well, well, I guess you just have to. I'll make it up to you. Okay, Jay. I don't know what's the matter with me. I think it's all this no sleeping. I can't seem to sleep up here. It's too quiet. You have my personal guarantee everything's gonna be okay. I know it will, Jack. As soon as I get this stuff finished. You going out to what? No, I brought today. Oh, see ya. I'm going for coffee. Here. Oh, we'll settle up later. Okay. Well, how's it feel, kid? All right. After all, you have a good chance for comparison. Marriage life, also business life. So which appeals? Well, it makes a difference with a child. This way, I'm always worried. Is she all right? But without any shilly shally for which would you choose? Oh, my home. When things were going all right. <laughs> when do they ever? You'd be surprised. What are you figuring out there? You're withholding? My trip. This Sunday again? 
You knock yourself out, you know it. What about money? Doesn't it cost? Not so much by bus. Ellen only takes a half fare, so that brings the whole thing to about 420 round trip. Don't that bus make you sick? Well, it bothers Ellen a little bit, but if I give her half an aspirin, it's all right. Is that good to feed a kid aspirin? That's only a half a tablet. I guess she knows what to do. She's brought up two kids very nicely. What? I'm... I mean, Ellen... I didn't mean anything, Flo. See, if I get the early bus, then it gives us practically the whole afternoon. If I make the 5 o'clock back, it's the only one back on Sundays. One thing is the anyway, last trip you, know you make we're out all here. Right. Yes, Listen, sir. we're going to have to get that other bus because it's the last one. And you are too, aren't you? Five hours That's some good? service for you. You ought to get your money back. Don't worry, I will. I want my money back too. Boy, if I could just lay my now, hands on that. Don't get excited. Here's your heavy sweater. And you're feeling okay, huh? And here's the magazines you sent. I'm sick of the bus. I'm not going. I'm not going. I think I better take it. Thanks, honey. At least I saw it. Let's go, lady, if you're going. Okay. I'm not going. I'm not going. Go on, go on. Go on. We just got here. Go on, Daddy will be home in a couple of days. Daddy will be home in a couple of days. George, can it be the only company? That's right. Pop's got enough of a strain without too much company yet. Why? Oh, well, you know, just getting back to work and all. Oh, I thought maybe I was a strain. Oh, no! It's Daddy! I'll go, I'll go! Hello, Hi, Hello Daddy. Alan. Hi, George. Hi. Look what Daddy brought you, honey. Hot dog, I'm gonna read every one of them tonight. Here's another present. What is it? Indelible color pencils, but be dipping them in a little water, not on your tongue. Thank you, George. I was a barmaid. Hi, George. Hi. Sit down. They're gonna leapfrog his promotion. You hear about that? Oh, shit, honest? Hey, Big Mouth, I appreciate it if you let me tell my own wife something. You were just sitting. Oh, when? Around a week or ten, he said. Oh. Say, I got a great idea. Yeah, ball bearing roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna tell about the lawyer letter, Ma? What? The lawyer letter. What lawyer letter? Oh, I didn't open it. Why, it's addressed to me? No, me. So why didn't you? I told you, because it's a lawyer letter. I didn't want it by myself, naturally. Give me a cigarette, will you? <coughs> what is it? Want me to step out? Wilson and Halper and Counselors and Law, 1740 Broadway, New York. Mrs. Chester Kiefer, New York. Dear Madam, 
The last will and testament of Clarence F. Dow, deceased, was filed on April 11th by this office for probate in the Surrogates Court, County of New York, State of New York. The undersigned, acting as executor, hereby makes notification that you, as Mrs. Chester Kiefer, Nee Florence Derringer, have been named as beneficiary under the terms of the above-mentioned document in the sum of $1,284.63. Happy days! I'm gonna faint! No, I'm not! Chet! How about let's buy a yacht and take a cruise to Coney Island? Listen, I never thought I'd need other people, but can you imagine? Oh, Chet, maybe our luck changed. Maybe for the good. Yeah. You look funny. So I've been told. Well, something... You got a great break. Congratulations. I got it. It's for us, isn't it? Catch me. But they don't know what's... Tell you later. I'll go see if dinner's ready. Yeah, well, I'm not so hungry. I gotta get some air. I don't feel so good. Oh, Chet, please. I gotta get some air. Anything wrong with that? He was all better, Ma. He'll be right back. How about something to eat? Sure, George. Sit down. What are we having? It's casserole. Oh, I don't mean that old stuff. I mean dessert. The meringue pie? Yay! Is that your favorite? All my life. It's my fourth favorite. Say, this is great. Think I may just move in here. You mean come and live here? Certainly. You think my father would like that? Excuse me. You know what my fifth favorite is? No, what? Guess. Devil's food cake. No. Banana ice cream. No. Caramel custard. Now, how could it be? That's my second favorite. Oh. Give up? Yep. Prune whip. Ha, ha, you didn't guess it. Prune whip. You getting up? Florence? You getting up? What's the matter? You decided not to talk today. What good's that? Well, maybe the cat's got your tongue. What gets settled with no talking? Sometimes even with talking, it doesn't, but with no talking, never. Come on, Florence, will ya? Will I what? Cut it out! Cut what out? Oh, fine! You're the one went hard nose all of a sudden, so why should you just pick your any old time if to talk or not? I only waited around here the whole last night, that's all. George finally went home around 10 o'clock. I waited till almost 12, and you still weren't. A quarter after 12, I went to bed. 20 after I came in. Who cares? I see how worried you were, right to sleep? <laughs> I did not. Just making out, huh? That's right. Very brave. Well, where were you anyway? Walking around. I don't follow your whole attitude, Chet. I know you've been sick and I make allowance, but sick is one thing and crazy still another. I'm not crazy. You may drive me, but you haven't yet. What did I do? How should I know? What are you Why should to... any Clarence F. Dow leave you $1,284.63? How do I know why he should? Because you were there, not me. Listen, I worked for him. That's all I know. You got paid, didn't you? Of course. So why should he leave you $1,284.63? Maybe he felt like it. I don't know. Well, I don't feel like it. What do you know about that? Well, what do you want me to do? Nothing. So what's the argument? I look great, don't I? Everybody knows about her. It's bound to find out. You can't keep a thing like this on the QT. A thing like what, for heaven's sake? You don't see anything wrong in it, huh? No, I don't. Well, then you need glasses if you don't see it. You need glasses yourself. A man doesn't leave anybody $1,284.63 just for playing nothing. He wasn't a man. Yeah, what was he, a trolley car? Oh, he was my boss, not a man. I didn't even like him. Yeah, I guess he liked you all right. 
No, he didn't. That's why he left it to you, huh? That's what I can't understand. You and me both, honey. Look, Chad, you want me not to take it, so I won't. What good will that do? Well, if you don't want me to take it and also to not to take it, so what? So nothing. You know how long it would take us to save up that much money? A year. Maybe two. That's right. Maybe never. That's right. Maybe never. All right. So I'm a flop. So I admit it. So I can't support you. So maybe you ought to do something about it. Chet, you're not acting nicely. What can I do? Well, I don't know. I don't even know what I can do. If you could only calm down, just cool off a okay, minute. Okay, I'm cool. Listen, I didn't understand the whole thing myself. I remember him, a very mean old man. Old, huh? Oh, old, old. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I remember he had this whole reputation for being cranky. People even mentioned to me when I, when I got promoted into his office, they said how cranky, how demanding, no consideration. So why did you do it? It was a job. Oh, sure. I thought I could handle the situation. And I guess you did, all right. No, I didn't. No matter what I did, never enough. Even extra things, personal things. What do you mean, personal? Oh, going and shopping on my lunch hour. Sometimes he'd tell me, buy him razor blades or socks, stuff like that. On my own lunch hour. No consideration. But you did it, all right. Well, sure. And what else? What else what? Go ahead. Listen, Chad, I can take just so much. You don't have to if take you anything. So far, I'm the one doing all the taking. I'm sick of all this insinuations and Insinuating? I'm telling spin. you right now. We couldn't sleep anymore. We got very restless. Oh. What's the matter? Not today. We have to. If not, it's bad luck. Don't be so superstitious. I'm not super anything. You hate me today. No, I don't. I love you. Then why can't we sing our good morning song? Okay, okay. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with sunshiny faces. Oh, this is the way to start a new day. Well, if it ain't the Postmaster General. Hello, Pat. Can I talk to you a minute? Anytime, boy, anytime. Never too busy to say hello. Pat, just for instance, how would you feel about it if somebody left Emily a big wad of dough? Say somebody she once worked for. Emily never worked. She don't believe in it. I know. But suppose they did. Wouldn't you think it was fishy if they did? Who left it to her? I'm just taking a hypothetical case. No, I mean, who left it to Florence? You wouldn't know him. Well, what does she say? She doesn't say anything. She just screams. Say, somebody left me a thousand, I'd scream too. Not the way I see it. Let me tell you something, Chet. You got a bad attitude to money. You think so, huh? I doubt I ever had a talk with you. The subject didn't come up of money. You think it's important. Important if you got none. But you're all wound up in it, Chet. This isn't the money, it's the principal. No, no. You're just getting excited because you're getting pulled in two ways. You don't want her to take it, but you can't stand her to give it up. You're just talking gaggle, Pat. See, the reason I understand you is I'm different. You're always neck high in some scheme to do with money. No scheme if somebody wants to get someplace, is it? I'm someplace. Be a butcher all your life, do you? Look, I got a job. One thing, it's steady. Up, down, come or go. One thing people got to is eat. All right. 20 after 8 in the morning, I give that Emily a good bite in the neck, and I'm off. 10 minutes to 9, sometimes 5, I'm here. Good ventilation, clean working conditions. 12 o'clock, I go have lunch. Take a little walk around. Look in the windows. Come back. 5.30, we close that door no matter what. Half hour, clean up, ordering, whatever. 6 o'clock, hot or cold or Wednesday, I'm out. 10 minutes to 7, sometimes 5, I'm home. And here's the thing. 
Once I cross that door going out, I don't care about the shop or the store or the business again until I hit it the next day. From the time I leave this store, the only animal I worry about is Emily. I don't want to be a big man. Listen, they're on 2011 35th Avenue, Jackson Heights. I'm the biggest man there is. That's the only place I want to be a big man. So what's wrong with my point of view? All right, so I'm a stick in the mud. No ambition. But for my kind of type, I got married to Emily, who's the right kind of type for my kind of type. And she don't push me. She don't tell me what the woman next door got for Christmas. That's it. Live and let live. Is that beautiful or am I prejudiced? You don't understand my whole problem, Pat. But thanks anyway. See you. Darling. I see you, Dad. Well, I didn't know if you were coming or when. Nothing. How's it, kid? All right. Sleeping. I never did so much thinking as the last couple of days. Better eat. Used to be, I thought this way about something or that way. Lately, I don't know what. About the money? But this much I decided. Never mind my own feelings. I gotta swallow everything. I gotta think of the kid. But not me. Sure, you. You too. Thanks. So what I'm trying to say is... Okay. You got my permission to take it. The money. Thanks. I'm glad you feel this way. Because I already did. Already did what? I went down there, took the money. No strings attached. Well, this is great. This is just A number one great. Now what? You couldn't wait. What were you afraid of? He changed his mind? How can he change his mind? He's dead! You can just stop hollering, Chick, because I made up my mind not to listen to anything hollering. Anything said, I'll listen to, but not holler. Don't tell me what to do in my house. You! That's right! My house, too! So what are you going to throw up to me now? That Howard and Joan gave some of the furniture? I'll pitch it out! And that radio, too, I hear I shouldn't have let it in here in the first place. Listen, Chick, I've been trying my best. But if you want the truth... You're not only hard to get along with, you're impossible. I leave it to a jury. You come in, you say it's all right to take it, so then I tell you I took it, so then you're off your handle again. <laughs> There's a difference. You don't see the difference. No, I don't. What do you want to do about it? I don't care. <laughs> Anything. Anything you want to do about it is all right with me. And I'm getting good and sick and tired of you slamming out of the house and every least little thing. It's no way to act! What am I supposed to have? A chain on me? Just go to sleep, and don't you worry. I'm gonna take care of it. I'm here, Daddy's here. You just go to sleep now. You satisfied? What? You make a nervous wreck out of it, that's what. Oh, again me, oh! What? You heard me. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? What do you want to chat? 
shame out of me. You better not, Florence. I'm gonna try a little of this fresh air thinking myself. What kind of a mother are you leaving a kid alone? Oh, you'll be. That's what you think. What kind of a father are you? No kind. No kind of father, no kind of husband, no kind of man, nothing. You may nothing. be right. Florence, for the last time I warn you, better stick around. If you too will. I'm going out. And so am I. And from then on, Judge Carroll, it was just a free-for-all. All of a sudden, it was everybody's business. Everybody had something to say, even Howard and Joan. They sent for me, and they give it to me one way. After all, you're not a couple of kids, you know. You're a married man and a married woman with a child. Don't you think I had to listen to plenty? Everybody yelling and at the same time yelling, stop yelling at her. The one thing I found out in those days is I noticed everybody's always interested in troubles are crazy about so long as it isn't their own troubles. Maybe if we could have gotten together in the right way and talked everything over without everybody else's opinion. And everybody else's opinion was no and yes, no and go and stop. And about the money, it turns out that crazy old thing Mr. Dowie left the same amount to 55 other girls. And 34 men. And he was 77 years old and in no way remarkable. Except eccentric. So if you found that out, so why didn't you say? I don't know. It was too late. I couldn't think straight. Everybody hollering. I couldn't either. <laughs> Whatever I did, it'd be wrong in somebody's opinion. And what's about your own opinion? I didn't have any. Like you yourself said that time. You didn't know what you thought. And I don't now. So we wind up here, and I guess this is the right place. I think so, too. <laughs> Pretty risky thing, meddling in other people's lives. Advice. <sighs> Always worried when I give it and when I take it. Then, of course, you two have had nearly seven years of each other, and I've only known you a few hours, so the fact that I think you ought to stick together isn't much weight. You've had hard times, but good ones, too. You've each made some mistakes, and so has everyone. And now you've decided. I wonder if it isn't just wrong-headedness. How do you know what the other one wants or thinks or feels? However, oh, tis late, isn't it? My husband gets awful irritable when I get home too late too much. There was a writer once said, I forget who he was, but he said, every human being's a plot. That's right. I wish I had time to hear all of yours. Maybe there'd be a solution if we went deep enough. However, thanks for trying. I imagine we'll finish you up tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night. Good night. You're taking them both tonight, Your Honor? What? Both briefcases. Oh, I think I'd better. A lot of heavy work here. Charlie, hmm? I think we can scratch Kiefer versus Kiefer for tomorrow. Made up, have they? I don't know, but let's scratch him just for luck. What do you say? All right. Well, here, I'll take those. Oh, no, that's all right. Night, Charlie. Night, Your Honor. See, the only trouble, I can't promise I'd be no different. The way I am, that's how I am. Me too. I know everything wrong with me. Too ambitious, disillusions are grander and all that. Well, what about me getting nervous? I get nervous too, don't I? It's a nervous world. Guess we found that out. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Flory. You think so? I'm too scared. I mean, when we got together finally the first time, I never imagined could be different or we could bust up or anything. Now I'd always be thinking about it. What makes you think I'd let you? Well, I mean, at least I'd know it's possible. Maybe it's a good thing to know it's possible. Maybe. I like to make a promise everything's going to be different, I mean, but how can I promise that? I'll tell you what I can do. I can tell you I'd certainly try. I would, too. With the bottom of my heart. So what's wrong with that? So OK? If we could only remember not to blame each other when things went the wrong way. So OK, I come over there. <laughs> I don't see any stop sign, do you?
Good night, folks. Good night. Good night is right.